Good afternoon from the Go Local Live Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center in Providence. I'm Rick Simone and we are back on the taste on this uh, Wednesday that started out messy and now looks to be fine. It was easy to get in the city, so thank you to everybody that stayed home and created great parking spots for me and my guests today. Much appreciated. We've got a really cool show. Um, over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking to a lot of different people about dining news happening kind of in this first quarter of the year, as well as some events happening. And we try to cover what's going on, not just in Providence, not just in Rhode Island, but also in the region. And we've gotten a lot of great feedback from people about making sure that we do that. So the guests I have joining me today is I've got Harrison LK coming in. He's the Corporate Beverage Director for EXO Cafe. He's part of the LK group there. We'll talk about all the stuff that they've got going on at EXO, but also talk about Providence Restaurant Weeks. Now, Providence Restaurant Week started a few days ago. It goes until the 27th, and my good friends over at the Providence Warwick Convention of Isbio, Martha Sheridan and her team do a fantastic job with this every year, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that. I also have Shane coming in, and Shane just over the weekend launched his, I believe it was his Kickstarter program for the Burgundian. So I've got a lot of great questions for him about what the Burgundian is, what the Kickstarter program means, and what he'll be doing. And then my good friend Doug McLeod is coming in. Now, Doug and I have known each other for... Oh God, probably 18, 20 years. Um, he is with Mianetto USA, and I'm a huge fan of Mianetto, and very excited to talk to him because he's participating in the Mohegan Sun Sun Wine Fest that's coming up next weekend. Um, so we're going to talk about his participation, get an overview on their Proseccos, and the big history behind Mianetto. And then my last guest is going to be Francis Chen. Now, Francis has this amazing Ken's Raymond, like a block or two from where I'm standing right now, that has become ever so popular, very hard to get into, and he was one of two Rhode Island restaurants that were asked to be a part of the Sun Wine Fest. So I, I chose him for that reason and to also get the background on what's going on over at Ken's Raymond. So he's going to be joining me as well to talk about that. Um, so I'll give some more details about the Sun Wine Fest as I get into those interviews for everyone that would like to hear about it. Now, to get started, I want to bring in Harrison, and uh, Harrison is a wine guy like I am and a beverage guy, so I'm excited to have him join me. And he's got food, so there's and nothing wrong with that. Hey, Rick. That. How are you, sir? Oh, awesome. Thank you for coming in today. Yeah, Let's of course. This over uh, here. I might have too much stuff. Never too much stuff. No worries. Especially when you got wine. There's of never course. too much stuff. <laughs> we make room for the wine. Good to see you. How are you? Thank you for coming in. Yeah, of course. Thank you. So, Harrison and I were talking before the show began, and EXO is now celebrating 20 years, right? You just 20 years, yeah. 20 yep. years. So, in 20 years, I was saying that his father, John L.K., who runs the group, he must have been like, you know, five, six years old when he got started. So you've been involved in this for the 20 years. The long time, yeah. yeah. It's been a, I've, I've been, uh, been along for the full ride. I think officially I started bussing tables there in uh, 99 was when I was legally allowed to. So. <laughs> now, with the celebration that started, and we're going to definitely get into touching upon restaurant weeks for sure, but with the celebration that started, it began in December, the 20-year anniversary? It began in December, yep. And okay. uh, so to celebrate that, we uh, wanted to honor... Um, you know, the 20-year tradition, and um, we had all 1997 pricing for all of our cocktails, all of our wine, and all the food for that one week. But fortunately, you missed it, but, uh, you know, there's always fun stuff happening at XO. But in honor to do that and to get a little bit more into talking about the 20th anniversary, as you said, there are other great things coming up and what you're highlighting on your menu mm -hmm. to honor. You've had some amazingly talented individuals that have gone through the kitchen over there. Yeah, so fortunately over the last 20 years we've had some really, really amazing chefs. Um, you know, John L.K. being one of them, he's the owner. Uh, Jules Ramos, uh, Nick Raybar, Ben Lloyd, uh, Rachel Klein Gates, yeah. uh, the most recent Andy Pyle. Um, so we've had a really, a real fortunate run with a lot of great chefs and to honor and celebrate that, um, the menu that we're currently having has some of our uh, best best dishes and most famous dishes over the last 20 years. Um, so that way we can kind of relive, you know, the duck menage a trois you had in, in 2001. And, um, you know, don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, those chefs and those, that talent, those, a lot of those people are still in Rhode Island. I've had a bunch mm -hmm. of them on, on the taste here with me. And it, it's amazing that when you gather up this history, how much they lend to it over the time. I mean, I mean not just the memories of them being there, but also what they lend to the reputation and the style of the menu and how it changes from each chef that comes in after them. Um, Absolutely. Each chef has their own style and uniqueness to them, which, you know, uh, it, you know, we just try and harness and, and use that to be the best we can be. And your father's been really good at, at seeking out that talent and his patience and his drive to build this group that you now have. 
what are what's the restaurants that are in the group now? Let's go over that real quick. So we have uh, Exo Cafe, yeah. Ten Prime Steak and Sushi, uh, Lux Burger, uh, Harry's Bar and Burger, which there are actually four locations in Rhode Island four. now. We were uh, in two, 2017 was a very very busy year. We opened up two locations. Well, one in Lincoln on Front Street and one on Thames Street in Newport. So Teddy Newcomer, who is the who heads up the group with your dad, he's the president, he's the president, of, the, president of, the, of the restaurant. So Teddy's very involved. We see him up on Federal Hill constantly at that location. So I see him there, and I was thrilled when you guys opened the one in Lincoln because it's right down the road from my house. Yeah. So I was very excited about that, and that's really taken off, Harry. It's done really well. It's doing well. really, really well. You know, um, thankfully everyone loves a cheeseburger, so it's a uh, it's an easy sell. No complaints from that. What'd you bring here today? Um, so today I wanted to uh, highlight some um, the restaurant week and uh, an excellent dish that we have here over at XO. Um, so this is one of the appetizers that we're going to be doing for restaurant week. Uh, this is the uh, beef tartare. It's made with uh, uh, filet mignon, um, a little bit of blended mustard, capers, shallots, um, some black pepper. Um, it's then mixed up, topped off with a uh, egg yolk, oh, gosh. some cornichons, some pearl onions, and then finished off with some uh, crostinis. Now this is one of the things on the restaurant right now. And this is uh, the wine that we're pairing with it. Uh, this is a New, Wheel, uh, New, <laughs> New Zealand uh, Sauvignon Blanc. So it's going to have a lot of mineralness to it, nice, crisp, a little bit of acid. Well, uh, it's it. really going to balance well with the fattiness in the egg yolk and the, uh, and the filet. Now, Harrison knows his beverages, let me tell you, because if you look at any of the restaurants, no matter the casual style of them or the upscale style of them, is that the beverage program in every one of your group, everyone in the group is amazing. I mean, I love going to Harry's and it's probably, for my style, it's one of the few places that I get to actually have a beer that I enjoy mm. to going in there and I'm not a big beer drinker. Well, so. there's a big selection over there, so it's easy. There is, it's an excellent selection. Cheers, thank Cheers you. to you. Happy New Year. Thank, thank you, you so much. Me. Happy New Year to you. Oh, very nice. I can see where this would go perfect with that. So for Restaurant Week, it's going on from, I believe it just started, and it goes until the 27th of January. Mm -hmm. There's over 90 restaurants participating that the Convention and Visitor Bureau has told me about. And there's two menus, depending on you know the type of restaurant you are. You can either do the lunch menu, if you're participating in it, it's a three-course one, and I believe that that one's priced at $16.95. And then they've got the dinner, which is again three courses, right? Mm -hmm. And there's two price points, I believe, for the dinner. I think there's twenty nine ninety five and thirty four ninety five, yep. right? So the two price points. Tell us what else is on your menu because people are everybody was going crazy knowing that you're going to be participating in this. Well, we have some, uh, you know, uh, restaurant week's also fun because it allows our chefs to um, step out of the norm, be a little more creative, you know, uh, maybe come up with some new specials for the upcoming menu. Um, you know, and just try and, you know, let the creative juices flow. Right. Um, so, uh, some, one thing we have on the restaurant menu, which has been a staple at XO for probably the last couple of years, uh, the mushroom bolognese made with hand-cut hand fettuccine in-house. Uh, really nice mushroom duck salads. Really, really awesome dish. Um, and it's vegetarian. Awesome. Um, another great dish is the uh, duck breast that we have on there. Really, really nice. I mean, I'm a big fan of duck breast. It's, yeah, I'm right there know, with it's, you. It's really nice because you can eat it medium, medium rare and, um, you know, not worry about, you know, any issues. No, and you guys, I mean, duck is something, even at the other restaurants I've been to, you guys do, you prepare it amazingly, so it's awesome. It's a big, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of that. If I was having dessert, which, are, if you're, why wouldn't you? Uh, the trio of creme brulee is awesome. That's definitely something that we've been serving since 1997. Uh, you know, and it's just a wonderful uh, assortment of some house-made uh, creme brulee. There's usually always vanilla and then two other um, flavors, espresso, white chocolate, uh, you know, raspberry. There's a lot of, chef, chef likes to change it up weekly. Yeah, you just made me start. Now I'm ready to eat already. <laughs> so with all this going on with restaurant weeks for the couple weeks going on, there's been a lot of accolades over the years for you guys. And in 20 years makes me go back to thinking about that because I was there when you, your dad opened the restaurant. But you guys have been called one of the hippest restaurants, not just in Providence, but in the state. Mm -hmm. You've got that romantic vibe that goes there. And even though, you know, you have... I think Town & Country named us most romantic restaurant in Rhode Island. So very, yeah. very, very, very cool honor. No. And that's, if you go there today, over the 20 years, even though, you know, there's always updates and things that get added to the restaurant as you get to that stage, but it still has that same vibe when you go in today. It does. When you open. It's a very comfortable, it does really cozy great. atmosphere. You've got a great bar. He's got a great team that's over there. Um, and the group as a whole, like you were just talking about Harry's, keeps growing. So you keep growing. And we've got some news about the newest venture that's about to come. Yeah, so we're growing a little more. You know, we're uh, very excited. Uh, I can't announce the date 
hundred percent, but uh, I know we're going to be opening it up very soon. It's going to be called Zaco Taco, uh, which is a modern Mexican restaurant, which I'm really excited about. Um, you know, we're going to be featuring really exciting cocktails and extensive tequila list. Um, all the tortillas are made in-house, organic, non-GMO, white corn, um, all gluten-free, uh, blue corn tortilla chips and uh, white corn tortilla chips for, you know, guacamole and salsa and stuff. And uh, it's, it's really going to be an, uh, an exciting experience. Now, this is in the Jewelry District. Right in the Jewelry District at the former restaurant of Rick's Roadhouse. Now, that's a big space. Very big space. Uh, you know, we, we've been doing a lot of uh, uh, aesthetic works in the place for over the last couple weeks. As many of you know, if you've come down and uh, um, said bye to Ricks with us, so thank you. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're, we're really excited. We have a, a, a taco truck inside, which we're going to be serving tacos really? out of. You know, it's, it's going to be a really exciting, exciting place to come and check out. So in the next couple of weeks, they have good social media as well. You got to pay attention to their social media that's coming up, so you know the date of when that's Zaco coming. Zakotako R I. Zakotako R I. All right, awesome. Now we Hashtag. Got that so that's a, and that's funny because that area that's like the perfect concept for the combination of what's going on in the jewelry district. And there's nothing else around there too, which right. you know with uh, the Brown U R I and uh, right. the medical center behind. Medical it, center going opening up. I mean, it's you know going to be bringing a lot of people, a lot of hungry people. You know, so. They're going to have to eat somewhere. So you got a new place to try in the middle of the winter, which will be fantastic because we need new places in the middle of winter to lift our spirits. That's right. So I want to shift back to EXO for just a second to talk about the beverage program because it's obviously something you specialize in. Mm -hmm. Having this many restaurants to go after is a, lot, is a lot. It's a lot in your plate. And you've got a variety that spans, like you just said, from now the Mexican side to Harry's Burgers to, mm -hmm. the, to the restaurants like EXO. How did this come about that the beverage program has been so important and has the guests responded over the course of time? Because I'm a giant wine fan and your wine lists are amazing. So, um, well, the uh, you know the beverage program definitely exp uh, you know have expanded a lot over time. You know, um, through the different trends and different liquors and wines and um, you know just things people are drinking changing every year. Um, you know. I mean, last year I was a huge whiskey drinker. This year I've been drinking a lot more vodka. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, um, it, you know, we try involved with the with with the trends. Um, you know, the biggest trend that I've seen over the last couple of years is really more old school style cocktails coming back. Okay. You know, and getting away from this, you know, fifteen minute fancy cocktail to just having a really good, well made drink. Right. Um, you know, and that's what we try and focus on. And it seems to me that the menu, the style of your menus and how you prepare your beverage programs is that people are experimenting. Like I've been in there and I've seen people, I, even at Lux, I've seen people that order a drink that they've never had before mm. just because they, it's, it's well, there. People, people in general are starting to get a lot more consumer savvy about what they're, what they're enjoying, what they're putting into their bodies, what they're consuming, eating, and drinking mm -hmm. in the same. And, uh, you know, just with the, you know, you want to know something, you pull out your cell phone and Google it and you have the answer right at the tip of your finger. So the consumer is just a, a lot more intelligent. So, you know, you have to respect that and, you know. No, I agree with you. Um, for Restaurant Week, are other restaurants in your group participating as well? Um, yep, we're also doing Restaurant Week at, um, at uh, Ten Steak and Sushi. Okay. Um, we are not doing it at Harry's or at uh, Lux because we're actually cheaper than yeah, the, the style restaurant week. Yeah, the style menu. Um, so, you know, we don't want to force anyone to overeat. <laughs> um, but uh, but we will doing at XO and at 10 Real Hard Restaurant. So he has, lunch the, and dinner. he has the menu here, which is fantastic, and it's lunch and dinner right down the street. Well, lunch and dinner at 10 Prime Steak and Sushi. Okay. XO is open for dinner seven nights a week. Got so seven nights. So you got seven chances a week to go until the restaurant weekends. So if you want to check out the menu, definitely go to their website and do it. If you're interested in checking out everything that's going on in the city, make sure you visit Go Providence. Like I said, the CVD has done a great job. Uh, again, Martha Sheridan, Kristen, Christina, all those guys over there do an awesome job put together. And I'm telling you, just from what he said and then looking at this, you're going to have an enjoyable time going out and checking out XO. So, Harrison, thanks for making the time to come Thank today. You. Really Thank appreciate you. Thank it. you. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. Thank you for having me down right. It was fun. And I can't go wrong with the wine list with these guys. I'm telling you. Well, Christina's going to help us here. Thank you. Thank you again. Tell your father I said hello, please. I will, absolutely. Okay. All right. So, like I said, I've been going to XO since they opened. Harrison's done a great job. He started there with his dad when he was young. And to have them come in and represent a restaurant crew is kind of important to me to bring Harrison in and represent a restaurant ahead. Now, Shane is coming in already prepared. 
Yes, Look sir. At this. I'm ready to go. Oh, God, that looks like a donut to me. Like, I'm ready to already It's a like, donut waffle. It's a donut waffle. <laughs> or a waffle nut, as we now Thank have called it as of today. A waffle what? A waffle, a waffle nut. A waffle, a waffle, waffle and a donut. I love it. Thank you we're for making waffle. the time to come in. You're welcome. So, Shane and I were connecting back and forth on email because he just did something over the weekend, and unfortunately, I was not able to make it. So, I wanted to make it up to him and be able to have him come in and talk to all of you about it and educate me even a little bit more on his projects. But, Burgundian, the Burgundian, started back in the summer, right? You just yes. launched in the summer. Yeah, so I launched the business June 24th, yep. this summer, and uh, the, my launch pad product is the Liege waffle, which unlike a batter-based waffle, is a dough-based waffle. So it's risen with yeast, okay. more like a brioche dough. It's a two-day process to make. Okay, so but, that's been a massive question out there. So what yeah. is Liege, so go yeah. ahead. Yeah, so Liege, so Liege. from the town of Liege, Belgium. Okay. And really the unique product are these things called pearl sugars. So I get these imported. It's derived from a sugar beet. And what's unique about these is because of, because of that consistency, when they cook on the waffle, they caramelize on the outside of the waffle. So they don't burn, and it gives it this nice, chewy, dense texture to that yeasted risen waffle. And it's just, uh, for me, better than any other waffle I've ever had. So there's got to be a story, because that's a very unique way of well, making it. So there's got to be a story behind the Burgundian name and how you got into this. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so you got to talk. Absolutely. So... so uh, a few stories, how I got into this waffle and loving it. I was in the Army for uh, 10 years, active duty in a, in a previous life, and I was stationed on the border of France and Belgium, which some people had to go to Iraq, I got to go to France, you know? <laughs> some people picked the right straw, I guess. And I fell in love with this waffle. We would walk to the market every Sunday, and this little French guy named Bernard would be serving these waffles, and I just fell in love with it. Uh, so. At the same time, I really got into Belgian beer over there, and I read this book called The Great Beers of Belgium, and in it there was this quote that said a name Burgundian that's been used in Belgium for centuries, and the name Burgundian means someone who loves food and drink in both quality and quantity. And for me, that clicked. I said, that's, that's me. That's who I am. This yeah, is amazing. Say that one more time. Someone that loves food that and loves drink. That loves food and drink in both quality and quantity. I think I qualify. Right? Yeah. You're, a, you're a Burgundian. <laughs> I think I qualify for that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I think a lot of us are. That's, that's why our little hashtag is we are Burgundians. Because I think it, it and as I talk to people, it's, it, it's a social way to interact with food and drink and and, peop and sharing it with people. I love that. And so it's very holistic in my opinion and, and that's why I think it deep down we're all Burgundians that want to sit and share and connect over food and drink. I, I can't even argue. I don't even have any statement to go against. Right? I think that's fantastic. <laughs> but first and foremost, because I don't want to neglect this, thank you for your service and thank you for thank telling you. us about thank that. You. And thank I'm glad that your service brought you to a point that was a happy point in France and then brought you back to do something yeah. like this and <laughs> made you an entrepreneur seriously. So yeah, thank, thank you very you. much for your service. So, you came back, mm -hmm. this just launched in June that you started this, and you've kind of been at pop-up events, that type of thing since exactly, June? Exactly, okay. exactly. So, I got out of the Army, I worked uh, as a product manager at Colette Travel for, yep. for uh, a couple right. years and, and contracted tours all over Latin America and France. But my, my calling, I, I've dreamed about entrepreneurship for a long time, and so in June, I, I with, with all the setup and everything, I, I was finally able to, to launch and start selling to the product selling this product uh, to the uh, customer base. So I really started, the, the focus was to build the name, build the brand of a Burgundian, and, and just kind of describe what a Liege waffle is because not many people have heard of it. So I, I really focused on pop-ups at coffee shops, Borealis Coffee, at different breweries in Southern Mass and Rhode Island, and and starting to go to a lot of farmer's markets like the uh, Hope Artis Wintertime Market. That's excellent. Yeah. So how many different types of waffles are you making now? Well, in terms of pretty much everything is done off of the main Liege waffle base. Okay. I do practice with a few unique ones here and there, but usually everything is based on that, and I do a lot of sweet and savory options. So okay. I will have a pork belly one with uh, mole sauce, queso uh, fresco, and uh, fava nuts. That's or, unique. <laughs> or I'll do a, a chorizo plantain hash uh, really? with, with uh, some, some cotija cheese and, and a little uh, roasted poblano crema. On the sweet side, I do one called the Sweet Roti, uh, which is a Dave's Coffee Milk infused mascarpone whipped cream, sweet Borealis Roti. Espresso, yeah, some Borealis Espresso uh, chocolate sauce, and Belici's Best Biscotti, uh, their, their Coco Nib Biscotti Crumble. And oh that's, gosh. I call that like four companies in one bite. Wow. And so we do a lot of that. However, whenever we kind of do a unique pop up, 
event like we're doing this this uh, coming up Monday, we'll create something like the waffle nut, or with Rebel Bagel, we've done uh, the baffle, the bagel waffle. So it was a <laughs> savory roasted scallion liege waffle dipped in there, everything seasoning, and covered with uh, chive schmear and bacon. Very which cool. was pretty amazing. So you got some really good myself. inspirational stuff going into all this. Oh, yeah. That's, oh yeah. that's fantastic. So now you've created this. You started mm -hmm. in June, so you've had six months, and all of a sudden you've got some great plans. And I, and I did post up a picture from something that you sent mm -hmm. me, which I thought was a fantastic picture. And, you know, everyone that watches The Taste knows that I'm very big into entrepreneurship, and most of my guests in one way or another are entrepreneurs going into the things they've done. So what Shane is doing is, is is definitely a step out there. And now, in six months, you're already expanding again. Tell us about what you're bringing into Providence next summer. So this, this, this coming up summer, I am bringing in a double-decker bus from England. So when you picture that, you probably picture those big red and white London buses, yeah. and that's exactly what I'm bringing in. That's awesome. And when it comes in, it's going to be completely restored and converted into a mobile cafe. So you're going to have waffles and a full coffee bar on the bottom floor where you can order out a window like a food truck or you can come inside. And then on the second floor, there are seats and tables and it's like a mobile cafe, which wow. will be parked in and around uh, Greater Providence. So, if, and, I, and I put up a picture that Shane had sent me, which I got a ton of feedback <laughs> on. But you're gonna, so the bottom floor is a service. Yep. And then it literally, and you can sit on the top. Yes, absolutely. There's there the bottom floor service, but you can also come in. There's a counter, and there will be a couple bar stools there on the first floor as well, where you can kind of wait for your coffee. And then upstairs, we'll seat about 28 people maximum. 28 people. Yep, yep. So there, so we'll have tables all along one side, and the tables will have the original bus benches together around that table and then on the opposite side there's going to be a long bar along the window with bar stools. So not only from the focal point and bringing this in from mm -hmm. England but to actually make it functional to be able to do these two things yeah. that's unbelievable. So you started this program to help you make this all happen. Absolutely. And you've got a short window from what you're telling yes. me here to make it happen. <laughs> so tell us about this Kickstarter that's going to help you do it and what's happening for the Kickstarter because that that's to do this is, is no short endeavor. Kickstarters have become popular programs, mm -hmm. but you've got a short window, so I want to hear how you're going to make this happen and what the Kickstarter means to you and to the, the guests that can support you. Absolutely. So we have the bus, and, and I've gone over to England, and I've met with the people who are restoring it. They've been doing this for 40 years, so they, they are experts and, and hit a very good timeline. Okay. So this Kickstarter is to take this bus to the next phase and actually add a lot of the really cool intricacies of the cafe, basically taking the shell that I have and turning it into a cafe. So this Kickstarter that's coming up is going to be about restoring the tables, bringing in tables, and, and what's really cool is they actually have reclaimed wood that will be used for the tables that's older than our country, which to me is wow. unbelievable. That's insane. And one of the cool things that we're actually doing for the Kickstarter is allowing people to sponsor a table. So if a business wants to sponsor a table, uh, they can they can put their put their name on it uh, for that's a certain great. price. So it's, so that's that's kind of a cool addition. But this Kickstarter starting this weekend and going through March fourth is about getting everything done inside. So it's a thirty thousand dollar request for forty five days. And and how how I've tried to look at it attacking this is going and just really upping uh, the the collaborations that I do, which I do quite a, a bit lot, already. Yeah. Yeah. And and really just kind of saturate the market with, with fun events to kind of see what being a Burgundian is all about and to see the potential for something as unique as a big red British double-decker bus cafe on the streets of Providence. Well, now you're talking about unique, which is going to be amazing mm -hmm. to see this, but you're also talking about historic, yeah. what you're putting in there, and that wood, that's unbelievable to yeah. have that done. So hopefully mm -hmm. you're going to have something that can kind of give the history of that wood to the guests that are coming Absolutely. in there. Absolutely. So the Kickstarter is going to help you accomplish this to put it out there. And you mentioned just now that there's a way, like if someone gives a certain amount, mm -hmm. it helps them get the table. But one of the big questions that I was getting, because everyone was loving this picture when I put it up, was will you be able to do private events? Now, going out and being at the farmer's markets, like mm -hmm. you will, is always a staple to, to your business model. But will the bus be able to travel where you can have it at, at you know, a, a reception, a wedding event, a, mm -hmm. a corporate event, that kind of thing? Absolutely. So the bus... It's probably only going to be moving at about 45 miles an hour maximum. So it will be slow go, but it will be available for private events. One of the business, parts of the business model for this bus is actually going to be able to do weddings. Two-sided on the wedding, either or take people from the ceremony to the reception. So imagine a bridal party right. sitting on top of a double-decker bus riding from you know, Y to Z, or 
and or uh, serving waffles at the wedding. So if you want that's a Liege basic. waffle dessert bar instead of cake and things, we can do a waffle cake. You know, that, that's, that's going to be offered as well. And if anybody's interested in that, part of the Kickstarter campaign is actually being able to, to make a deposit into that, uh, into that, that wedding uh, package uh, as well. Uh, we're, we're going to allow for certain Patriots tailgate parties if, if really? someone wants to there wants to go. rent the bus out. So you don't have to worry about driving. All you have to worry about is the tickets to the game, and then we'll take you up. We'll get the parking, provide uh, beer and food, you know, whatever awesome whatever the package idea. level is, that's an awesome and that's idea. also on the Kickstarter. That's an awesome yeah. idea. So the only other, I've never seen anything like this is from the restaurant mm -hmm. standpoint. The only other thing I've seen from a transportation standpoint. Mm -hmm was with Rockstar, and they've got a one that's, you know, I think similar that's coming from the UK, but it's from a transportation mm -hmm. standpoint. So you're going to be unique in this field, if i got to imagine, for the region, not yeah, just Rhode absolutely. Island. I haven't seen or heard of anything else that has the ability to serve out of it and eat it mm -hmm. to enjoy it. So this isn't something you're going to miss. If you see this thing coming down <laughs> no. the street, you're going to know what's going on with it. So the Kickstarter program, how long is that lasting? That's 45 days. So it starts this Friday the 19th at uh, Ragged Island Brewery in Portsmouth. And so you, then, you've got a bunch of pop-up events that you're going absolutely, to do. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So between Avenue and, the Pantry at Avenue Inn and PV Donuts with our, our donut waffle, we're doing a collaboration with Fountain and Company uh, Craft Ice Cream at PV Donuts that same night. Nice. We're going to multiple breweries and different events with, with Rebel Bagel and uh, and uh, Gastro's 401 sausage truck. And we were at uh, Bayberry I mean, the other night. And we were at Bayberry the other night. I right. mean, we, we have a lot of partnerships, and, and uh, which has been just incredible because there are so many other businesses that want to see something like this. Yeah, the camaraderie is amazing. For you to say all those places that are supporting you in this endeavor, Absolutely. That's, congratulations to them and congratulations to you because that's something. Yeah, you know, it's, it's an honor great. to be able to work with so many and get support from so many great uh, business awesome. food businesses. So my goal is going to be is that when Shane gets this launch, that we're able to do some type of live broadcast from the bus 100%. when it comes out in the summer so yep. that we can be a part of this launch with you because I think what you're doing is a phenomenal thing. So thank you, Rick. Thank you for making the time to come in today and share it all with us and thank you again for your service, which you did for us in the past. So thank you very much. We're excited Appreciate and look forward to coming. All right, thank thanks, Rick. All right, so that's pretty cool and obviously very exciting and I did get a lot of you that responded to the picture I posted up on social media. Um, now you know, now you've got the details, look out for it, help Shane if you can to get it started and established because um, it, it's definitely going to be a cool addition to us. And like I said, the only person, other group that I've seen from a transportation standpoint was Rockstar, and they've got that from weddings and different things as well, but not from the culinary standpoint. So this will be a, a pretty unique situation. So my next guest is someone that has been a friend for a very long time, uh, back to when I had my restaurant days. And truthfully, I can honestly say that Doug is the person that turned me on to Prosecco. So I'd like to welcome Doug in. Hey. Hey, how are you? Good, my friend. Let me give you, you that. Nice. That's so cool. Got, Look at this. I've got, I've got all the kit. Look at this. <laughs> He's always comes prepared. I'm always telling you. Always comes prepared, man. I love this. Always comes prepared with the whole, the whole kind of tasting, the whole this tasting thing. Back. Whoa, yeah, Christine, let me see that one. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a beauty, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> It's my kind of it's not, it's not for you. <laughs> oh, come on! No. You know, it's, it's for these hardworking people <laughs> right in the back. Thank you, yeah. Taylor. There you go. All right, so... Well, thanks very much for the invite. Oh, of course. Are you kidding me? So i, I got to preface this a little more, and I did at the beginning of this uh, segment, was that Doug and I have known each other for a long... Oh, my God, we got oh, more bottles. More. Look at this. There's, more, there's always more bottles at me and Christina. Christina. Nice. Thank you very much, Christina. You're welcome. So Doug and I have known each other a long time, and he used to be representing Rhode Island, and... I met him when I had restaurants on Federal Hill and in Newport. Oh, yeah. And Those these glasses good. bring back. Just one last oh, my trip. gosh. Look at this. <laughs> Loving this. Oh, for shoot. I'm in my heaven right now. Daniele. Look at that. So, God, this brings back a lot of memories. Long time. A lot long of memories. time. Long so time. So, these glasses, I still remember featuring these glasses in Newport. And we yeah. used to have this tree that you gave us that they hung up the, upside down from the tree. That's right. And that's how we'd serve it to the guests. We had a Prosecco bar. We actually had a Prosecco bar. That's how well. I think that's how you paid your rent. It probably you know, was. It was through <laughs> the, the breakage. You know, just <laughs> weekly, monthly orders from new glassware. That's but right. we used, Doug is the person that turned me on to Prosecco. And Mianetto is a staple in, in my house. And I, honestly, I can tell you my friends Jim Verity, Sherry Carrera, there's been so many people that I have done the same thing to and turned them on to it. So... It was right there at the very beginning, really turned Providence on to, yeah. uh, you know, to Prosecco. And then, uh, and then all the fun we had down at like, Newport for all of the, uh, 
you know, Marble House and for all of the uh, I really feel like wine. they were kind of like the trendsetter of that bit because it was really become, starting to become popular. And oh my gosh, yes. And so there was a lot with it. But I, I want to kind of, so you've been with me and Ed a long time now. 12 years. And, is, and now you're representing Connecticut, New York, that area that you're out to. That's right. That's and right. part of my thing was to preface, and I talked about this beginning of the segment, is Sunfest. Sun Food and Wine Fest is coming up next week. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. I mean, we have to, you know, we have to really, you know, I'm, on a, I'm on a juice cleanse just to get ready for, <laughs> just to get ready for Sunfest, because it really is a Bacchanalian kind of, yeah. uh, it, it is a lot, of, a lot of fun. A so I've fun. talked to my friends over in Mohegan, and we have two guests. Like I said, Doug is one, and then my next guest that's coming in, Francis, is participating from the restaurant side. But it begins on Friday, ends on Sunday. They've got uh, so many great events. They've got um, a grand tasting, which is Saturday. So many. A chef's, a celebrity chef diner on that they've got. Right, right. Friday's a bourbon thing, I believe. Bourbon thing, you know. And then... And we're there, we're there on Saturday, the 27th, and, and it, I, literally... We have to, you know, most, most vendors will, will kind of load in a case of wine, maybe six bottles. Right. Uh, we have to load in literally like um, three cases back because people will come up and they'll be like, and they'll say to me, and this is how I know to kind of cut them off. <laughs> they'll, say, they'll say, you're the best and, you know, I love you. And, you know, and when they start, when they start, you know, when they start, you know, I've got a ring on my finger, you know, when they start, <laughs> start throwing themselves at me, that's when I know that it's, they're done. And, they're, they're done. And I've, I've had the privilege of seeing Doug in many wine festivals over the years, but I've attended Mohegan's for the Sun Wine Fest for the last few years, and I am going again next weekend, so I'll be talking to Doug, some other great people that are there. Um, they have me, you know, we're going to be a lot of celebrity chefs that will be there. On Sunday, Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg are doing a brunch. No way. Yes, that's unbelievable. Snoop Dogg loves me in it. Oh, my God. So, so, he's gonna, so we'll have to make sure we get some stuff, but I'll be covering that next week in life from there. Well, we're going to be at the Slocum uh, and Sons stand. So right. we'll, have, we'll have, this is like what we call our, this most familiar to, to many people. Yep. I, mean, I mean, just feel the label. I mean, no, it's got it's the, awesome. you know, kind of these raised pleasure dots. Yeah. You know, it's got these, you know, it's you know, very tactile. But what distinguishes me and Edo from... I think every other Prosecco is that we bottle Mianetto about eight times a year. So so that brings up the point in talking about the bottling of it. Can we talk a little, and I def, I'm not going to cut him off from describing this stuff because it's no. amazing, but talk to me a little bit about the history as we intertwine in between. Yeah, chin chin. Chin, chin. yeah, good luck. Um, and thanks very much again for the invite. My the, uh, uh, the history goes back to 1887, so we've just celebrated our 130th anniversary, if I'm doing the math correctly. In fact, one of the things that we're going to taste in just a minute is the 100 and 30th anniversary cuvee, uh, which has zero dosage. So, you know, Francesco Mianetto started uh, the company back in, um, in 1887, you know, back in the day up in uh, the hills, of, just north of Venice, right. um, in Valdo Biadene, you know, there's, there's Mianetto. And if anybody's coming to, uh, to Italy, they should uh, certainly try to take a day out of Venice and go to Valdo Biadene. And, and if you've ever wondered whether or not you've had too much you know, Mianetto to drink, try to say Valdo Biadene three times fast. <laughs> it's, um, it's, a, it's a great sobriety test. Um, but so uh, Prosecco is all about freshness, and, um, and America has fallen in love with you know, Prosecco in general. Uh, but Mianetto, specifically because um, Mianetto was one of the, the companies, you know, the wineries to introduce Mianetto. So it's, um, it's one of those things that, uh, that uh, you know, it has to be fresh, um, has to have some heritage, which Mianetto has. Right. Um, it has to uh, be you know, high level of quality to begin with. And so this is a DOC um, from Treviso. And it's uh, one of the, uh, it's, it, you know, there's a, a larger area, a larger DOC, but the DOC Treviso is, is really, you know, produces very, f very fragrant okay. floral fruit. So, so now, in talking about this, how many different types are they're out there because this has changed even since when I was carrying it. Had it so well, there's really only a couple different types. I mean, there's a frizzante and a, you know, I, I can say this a spumante, a spumante. Um, which means just fully fizzy. Frizzante is less so, um, but really there's two different levels of quality. There's um, there's DOC and then DOCG. So okay. the nominazione di controllata garantita is a guaranteed quality, and then uh, DOC. Just means uh, it's a it's the denominazione it means that it's from the area that it says it's in. So this is from the little area of Treviso. So these are the labels that the Italian government gives us, and, and it's law. Yeah, it's, it's law, law out there, it's and law. it's out there for like Chianti. No, you like can't make prosecco in like Argentina or you know right. or well you can, but you, know, you can't call it prosecco. And you can't call it prosecco, and that's an important thing to realize because if, without those special designations, you could be drinking something that is kind of. A, 
Well, it's made from one grape, uh, and it's uh, it's made you know it's made in uh, Charmat method, so it's uh, it's always going to be fragrant. Oh yeah, so I brought you some Dena some, some Denali. Denali. This has to be aged for at least thirteen months. You know, it's the yeah. highest quality, and I brought just a couple little things because really the the lifestyle you know that Love we've things. we've uh, we've really embraced in uh, the U.S. is this Italian lifestyle, just you know, gen you know kind of just you know, easy elegance. So um, Denali cheese with the umame kind of saltiness. This, you know, this from the, uh, the the village in uh, Friuli called Denali di Friuli. That was absolutely delicious. It melted yeah. my mouth. I wouldn't bring anything less. That's fantastic. It's coming from Federal Hill, as you did. Yeah. So, and then and then the um, Grana Padano um, cheese. It's a it's a slow aged uh, hard cheese. This is really the perfect pairing with uh, with Mineto Prosecco. So it's um, you don't have to you know, get kind of crazy and do elaborate dishes like the French do, necessarily. But in talking about pairings, though, and this is one of the things that you helped me educate people on early early on, was that there is so much that you can enjoy in Prosecco. Oh, so yeah. many dishes, so many types of food. Everything goes. Because because Prosecco is one of the reasons why it's so, you know, so amazingly popular is because it's um, it's a, it's an affordable luxury. Right. Um, you can drink it any time. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is like yeah, any time is Prosecco time. Uh, it's not expensive, um, so we can afford to be generous right. with our friends, which we want to be. And um, and it's the great aperitivo. It's what everybody drinks in Italy when they're not, you know, say, you know, drinking something else. You know? And it's it's light. It's not, the, you know, believe me, everybody knows that I'm a wine enthusiast and I enjoy wine, but this I can have and I can sit there and feel, okay, I'm good and I can still do other things right afterwards. You know, it's very relaxing. Coming from, you're coming from the restaurant business as you have done and, yeah. you know, it's, uh, you're working 70, 80 hours a week. You're always on call. You know, you need to be fresh. And one of the things that I, I you know, talk to lots of people, particularly at the, the Food and Wine Fest, uh, Funny enough, teachers love Prosecco because you know they're they're you know they're grading papers at you know you know um, nine o'clock at night they want to have a little glass of something which That's is you know, nice thing to have. yeah and then and then they have to be up at five o'clock in the morning and, and go back to battle so, so this is the know. organic Prosecco so okay. um, we can uh, just we can use the same glasses right. because it's it's just Prosecco but the cool thing about the organic is that the Mineto organic Prosecco another DOC it's our prestige range this is um this tastes a little bit more appley it's a little bit more reductive okay. um, it smells it smells like Macintosh apples. It does. I was just going to say Macintosh. I was literally just going to say that. The power of auto suggestion. And I love Macintosh. Macintosh. So it's you know this is very autumnal. This is like the perfect kind of winter prosecco, uh, if you will. And the cool thing is that the uh, the bottle is wow. um, the bottle is 100 post consumer material. So it's uh, it's all recycled glass, recycled recycled foil, recycled recycled paper. So if you want to dial down your carbon footprint and enjoy a glass of Prosecco, then this is something that's really cool. Look at the bubbles. I the know. bubbles are so beautiful. It's yeah. awesome. So now, me and Nano, you're talking about the carbon footprint and the bottle there, but me and Nano has kind of been, to me, at the cutting edge of a lot of this. Not just oh. in the introduction into the States sure. and no. what they've done here, but the style. So, I mean, you talk about what you're doing there from a carbon footprint. You talk about you've come up with the, with the little bottles that you've had yes. that, were, that were incredibly popular. In, you know, in fact, you know, it just goes from strength to strength. The little bottles, um, it, you know, let's let's you know, get kind of wonky. They're one point, you know, they're they're point, you know, one eight seven milliliters. So they're um, they're like a glass and a half, if mm -hmm. you will. You know, so they're really great for having at home because you can just crack one and have a glass. You don't have to open up a whole bottle, but restaurateurs like it because they won't open up, necessarily don't want to open up a whole bottle. Right. You know, on a Monday night, you know, um, for me, I've seen so, people on the beach in the <laughs> summer having these things. Well, you have to have a cooler <laughs> full of them because you can't just you know can't just have one because innovation is kind of in the DNA of Mianetto. We've been you know innovating for 130 years now, so um, so uh, freshness. It's all about you know freshness. We're the only prosecco company I think that um, will bottle to order so here in Rhode Island you know uh, will our distributor MS Walker will give us an order we'll bottle it and we'll ship it so it's as fresh as it would be in Venice right. yeah, it's only about like six weeks you know. and, and you know and I have to give MS Walker a big shout out because that's how I got connected to Doug and they were a big part of my wine list and they're great it helped me bring guests onto the show as well to talk about wine and wine knowledge and they're good people and so, they're great people they're and people. you know this education that we're providing today with Doug is something where if you attend Sun Wine Fest or some of these other wine festivals yes. where he's at you receive this kind of more on that one-on-one -on -one approach, and I can. And you're pouring most yeah. of these right at the event. Or yeah, they're going to be all at the event. Okay. So, so we'll take you right through it. But one of the cool things I just want you know, everybody wants to know like where to go. Like, you know, everybody's drinking prosecco kind of all the time now. Yeah. Um, they're looking what you know, for the next level. Um, a lot of people will come up to me like in Saratoga or and say, "Oh, this is my prosecco. I've got that in the fridge. I love it. Right. Um, it's their go-to prosecco." So, you know, what do they bring to a party? What's the next step? 
up. And that would be uh, the luxury level, which is okay. which we call it the luxury, but it's our it's the Valdo Biadene Prosecco Superiore. So just like superior, superiore. And the cool thing is that this bottle is um is not something that you can buy off the shelf. It's this cost us about forty five thousand dollars to uh, produce the mold for this for bottle. bottle. So if you're going to go to a party, you want to bring something that pops. I mean, you know, pardon the pun. Uh, it uh, this is a um, this is a bottle that really kind of announces its arrival. It's got a little bit of. It has a little. You got these all for a <laughs> My God. Well, I got these. I got these. I got the cheese. Christine at Fromage and Old Saybrook um, gave me you know the cheese because you can't find Danelli at just everywhere. You know you your can. stuff. Oh my so, God. That was, so the um, superiore. Just, the nice thing about that olive it just made me more thirsty. <laughs> well, that's that's why that's what that's why that's why God invented olives. <laughs> So the superiore again. When you're going to step up to this, you're going to step up to a little bit more complexity. Okay. You're going to step up to maybe a little bit finer, you know, bubble. It's going to be a little bit creamier. This is um. This is a. Uh, so creamier. Creamier. It's interesting. I wouldn't have thought about that description for a second. Okay. Well, still crisp, still light. Yeah, you know, still you know, but you know, but you know, again, the the grapes in Val Biadene hang about two, maybe a week or so longer than, than in Treviso, and so a little bit more hang time. Okay. You know, surfers will know, you know how pleasant that is. You know, it's, uh, you'll get, um, you just get a little bit more complexity, a little more fun, a little more joy. Oh, that is delicious. So good. So good. Absolutely delicious. Under $20 a bottle, so, you know. Under $20 a bottle? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what can you buy anybody for like 20 bucks a bottle? I mean, That's... you can't buy a, a bouquet of flowers. So, um, so this is really stylish. Again, it's the DOCG, it's the Valdo Biadene, um, uh, Prosecco Superior. Really, really great stuff. I mean, yeah, you can drink it, you know, some people can drink it every day, but yeah. it's not that expensive. And, and I have to go back to just a second talking about the ease of this is that everyone that I've turned on to it, it's, this is so easy drinking and it goes with so many things. I mean, this is just the, the style to relax and everything, but... In fact, I'll tell you why. Um, it's only the, the Prosecco uh, Brut um, and the uh, organic, it's only 11% alcohol, 11.5% alcohol. I have people sending me messages about, my, my birthday's coming up, give me a bottle. <laughs> that's right. This is always in my house, Sherry. That's, Anybody that's comes right. over, that's right. House, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but, yeah, but 11% alcohol is a very moderate level of alcohol. You know, people don't think, you know, a glass of Chardonnay in a restaurant could be 15, 14, pushing 15% alcohol, mm. which gets you wasted. So, um, you know, Prosecco, um, you know, at 11, 11.5%, 11 you can you can have a third glass right. very responsibly. Um, and these glasses I always loved because there was this little measuring thing on the back here. Yes. They told you right where to fill it so you knew how you were well, doing it. Well, these, 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 are, these, are, these, uh, these are actually 12 years old. I bought, you know, I got these, you know, when I wow. first met you. And I've, I've, I've cherished them because... Um, <laughs> That's nice to have some at home. Uh, good. That's good. <laughs> I love them. This is fantastic. So I just want to just uh, this. This is the um, this is really the anniversary cuvee. Same okay. same prestige bottle, 1887 to 2017. It's not widely available, so you probably have to ask um, your wine merchant for this. But it'd be, this would be about twenty five dollars a bottle. That's it. Uh, we only made twenty. Yes. We only made ten thousand bottles of the anniversary cuvee, and it came out in a, around October. Um, and one thing I want to say about this is that when you're opening up a bottle of um, of Prosecco Mianetto, you don't want to just pop the bottle because we you know, we we put the bubbles in the bottle for a purpose. You know they you know they're you know, supposed to be effervescent. So you, you just want to turn it, let the uh, bottle and the pressure push the the cork out like, that. like that, a little yeah. sigh, and then um, and then. Uh, you, you know that it's going to be fully effervescent. So, so talking about another great invention that I love that Mianetto came out with, and I use the word invention because it was awesome when I got them, is he had these stoppers. So when we were in the restaurant business, if you didn't pour through the bottle, he had this stopper that went into the top and clicked onto the side. Yes. Now, I never had this problem in my house because the bottle always goes away, so I don't have this problem with needing the stopper, but they were the best thing in the world for people that didn't finish the bottle. In fact, I've got I've got some stoppers for you to take home oh, because awesome. I, can, I, love I don't know I don't I don't I know if them. like you know if um, you know if everybody in the office is going to be wanting to drink this afterwards. But I love it. So this is uh, very special in that it has zero what we call zero dosage. It's kind of a, um, a term uh, a French term, but it means uh, has no sugar added to it. So uh, it's bone dry, Whew, like feather light. It's just really really beautiful. It's amazing to me, and I've had these before, but it still amazes me to go through the lineup and have the difference. Like, I can tell the difference in each one right. that you're right. telling. Right. Well, I mean, there should be a difference because, you know, you're paying a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, for the luxury. You're paying a little bit more for the, the uh, Prosecco Superiore um, 130 
uh, anniversary, anniversary bottle. Yeah. So you know you want to. You, you, uh, so often I'm, I suspect that maybe marketing companies will just you know create the same wine and just stick different prices on it. Yeah. And it doesn't taste different from you know from. No, and it's, you're not going around with this. No, this is really special. So now the last one before I let Doug go. And again, Sunfest on Saturday. There's a lot out. A lot you're going to be able to sample all this if you're out at Sunfest. So I highly encourage you to go. But this is. The rosé. Now I'm going to finish this while I throw the rosé. Well, the, 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 the rosé is beautiful because everybody, every day is rosé uh, now. People are drinking rosé. Um, you know, uh, 360, you know, five days of the year. And I want to bring that up because there's always been this four box that's out there that rosé is summer thing. It's well, not. <laughs> well, th that that may be true for like say still wines, but uh, for sparkling wines, rosé is uh, is something that people drink all the time. And in fact, uh, men, you know, kind of like. Manly men even are drinking um are drinking yeah you know, you know, Mianetto Prosecco and um as well as uh, as well as rosé. I've had a guy at last year's um, Sun Wine Fest who kind of said, "Yeah, man, this is great. This is like a brosé." <laughs> and I was just like, "That's the first time I had ever heard brosé." And he got all of his friends around to like, "Yeah, come, hey, gotta try this. This is great because it's dry." So I can tell you this will make a good Valentine's Day gift oh, because I've is, already this, had the request this, for it. This so. is this is it for a Valentine's Day. It's in a beautiful clear glass package again about. About fourteen dollars a bottle. Yeah. So now this is light again, but yeah. the flavor is going to be a lot different. Well, because it's, it's not prosecco. So this is um, this is made prosecco is made from uh, the uh, grape called Glera. This is made from two grapes. One's called Rebozo. Uh, one's called um, um, uh, Legrine from Trentino. So this is a, just a light, dry, refreshing, beautiful, pale uh, pink color. They nailed it with. Um, with they really this. did. So anyway, thanks again. No, and thank you for coming in and making the trip to come oh, in here from that's Connecticut. That's great. You can look for them next Saturday for sure. Me and Edo, you know, is yes. anywhere. You can find it anywhere. I, I can get it anywhere yes. in the state. But next Saturday, Connecticut, make sure you go to Sun Wine Fest because Doug is there. And yeah, come say hi. They'll take care of you. And you'll see me. We're going to do some Facebook Live him and I will. Hey. So thank you, my friend. It's I good really to see you. Thank it. you looking so well. You can stick around and then we're going to do a picture. Okay, okay great. And All I right. got a little bottle for you as well. To like oh, I love it. Like, that's right. That's good. So. All right. Christina's going to want to try this. Okay, Christina. I'm gonna let, and I think Molly and Kate. Yes. And, yes. Okay, let's listen to the cheers out there. The cheers of everyone wanting to try. Okay. We saved you plenty Thank of glasses. Thank you. Bye. All right. Nice. Let you slide those guys out there. This one I'll put down here for now. Be helpful. All right. So, my last but not least guest, someone I'm excited to have bringing in, is I want to bring in Francis Chen from Ken's Rain. Francis, you ready? Yeah. So, I've heard a lot about Ken's Raymond, so I'm excited to have him in. And also, I mentioned earlier that he is one of only two Rhode Island participants. I believe Matuna Oyster Bar was the other one that was chosen to go to the Sun Wine Fest. So, kind of wanted to talk to him about that because I'm excited to see Rhode Island represented there. I think it's a great thing. How are you, sir? Hey, how's it going? Good. Thank you for making it in. I know you had a crazy you. day. Definitely. So, oh, we got more bringing over. Yeah. Look at, oh, yeah. this is awesome. Beautiful. Sauces. My God, the aromas are Thank making you. me like drool right now. So, you and your team over there have an amazing thing going, first and foremost. So, congratulations on that. Thank you. But, kind of give everyone an overview about Ken's Raymond, and then I'm going to get into the. I've got a lot of. I know I got a lot of instant messages from people and questions for him, and people are excited that he's going to be at the Sunfest. But I want to have him give an overview because his location is unique, your concept is unique. So, kind of give us a quick overview on Ken's Raymond. I mean, we're just here to just make good food, and that's pretty much it. Just all about the nostalgic mom chicken noodle soup. Really? Yep. So, how was the menu concept? How did that evolve? Um, so, basically, we started um, just as friends, and then we traveled the world, just eating ramen up everywhere, and we just wanted to, you know, bring everybody a little taste of home. Now, your location that you're at over there is a unique space. I mean, there's a couple other people that are next to you in, the, in similar style spaces, but mm -hmm. you're in a very unique spot, and it's been around three, four years now? Yep, just Four about. years now. So four years, so you got an anniversary coming up. I think it's this year, right? So yeah, in February. In February. So four years next month, so you're celebrating four years, which any restaurant in Rhode Island, once you've reached the three-year mark, it's kind of your milestone of success to get there. But for your spot, there are a lot of people that come into locations that can't succeed in such a small spot. It becomes a challenge for them. You guys have kind of mastered this challenge of how you operate over there. There's a you can sign up on the list outside the door. There's a hostess at the door that gets you seated and, and ushers you through, and even your decor is unique. So how did the concept in that space get chosen for you guys to go there? 
Um, when, we, well, when we started in Rhode Island, um, we just wanted to make it so that everyone can just get our food as comfortably as possible. And with that said, um, basically, we designed the whole place to just facilitate being, people being able to sit down, enjoy their food. That's awesome. I mean, and, it's, and it is a comfortable spot. I got to give them that. So tell us about the things you brought here today. So today we have a couple of items. We have our mazemen. This is the only ramen that we do to go. It's okay. a soupless ramen, so we can maintain the quality of it. And we also have our pork bun, which is classic. Nice. So these, and is this the size and the style that's served right now, sir? Yeah, exactly. It's like unbelievable to bite into. Yes, I will be eating this afterwards. You'll see me take a picture of it. No, afterwards. you should eat it now, man. <laughs> it's good. Couple to eat it now. We have two sauces that go with it. We Can I just our... bite into it? Because I'm like, yeah, this is like, you, man. This is like unbelievable. So tell us about what else is on the menu over there. I'm sorry, I gotta eat. After you, man. Uh, we also have our classic chicken python ramen. It's basically just mom's. Uh, a chicken noodle soup and that one is only available during our dinner time services from Tuesday to Saturday only it's because um, we take about 30 hours to cook the broth and within our limited space it's pretty much impossible to be able to serve it all day long without it running out like very early into dinner service oh God, this is delicious thank you for bringing this this is my lunch all so anytime, man. how the hours and that's another question I had out there there's certain hours that you're open for lunch and for dinner, and you kind of close in between, right? Mm -hmm. so tell us about those hours. Uh, so the in-between hours, um, from 3 to either 6 p.m. or 5.30, basically we just re-prep all of the vegetables so that that way everything is able to stay fresh for all so service. It's going into it. Exactly. Now, your ingredients and the things that you have, there's a lot of thought process that's gone into making sure you have the word authentic and the style that's out there. Are you guys sourcing locally? Is it your chef trying to find the best ingredients from wherever they can to get them in? Oh yeah, like we just want to get like the best in quality ingredients. We use Sid Wainer for all our vegetables. They are mm. one of the most reputable sources for vegetables in general. And we get our noodles from Sun Noodle. Um, we've been working with them for five years actually, a year before we even opened to develop our noodles and we kept on developing it throughout time. We're on like our 10th version right now. Really? Yeah. So, in four years, you've built this amazing following. I mean, there are times when you go over there and people will literally put their name on the list and know that it could be a half hour, it could be an hour before they get in, it could be 10 minutes before they get in. But this following is built. Do you think it's because this type of service was lacking, this type of product was lacking in Rhode Island, or is it because you guys have become so unique? Um, I think they, they just understand like what we're trying to do. It's, all, it's really just all about the food. You know, people are willing to wait. Like, I, I would wait a couple hours for, like, anything if it's good enough, and you know? People wait all over the country for different things. Now, you guys got selected, and I, we were t joking around about this when we were speaking on the phone about the process. Yeah. But in looking at the Sun Wine Fest list of people that are there for the Grand Tasting, which is the Saturday, so I think that's the 27th, the next Saturday, mm -hmm. is there are a large group of restaurants, large group of wineries, but... It's nice to see that Rhode Island is represented, and I was going through the list and t seeing who I would like to speak to, and you guys were listed. And the only other Rhode Island place was Matuna Oyster Bar, which is out there, mm -hmm. and another great place. But how did that come about? Was it just coincidence, or how did you guys get? I mean, I'm not sure how it came about. To be completely <laughs> honest, um, one day I was just literally I woke up, I checked my email, and I got I was reading throughout the like my list, and I saw the invite, and. We love doing events. We did a couple in New York before, and we were down. But they reached out to you. It's not something you guys were thinking No, about I had no idea it was coming. Yeah, so I mean, an invitation sent out to them, which again goes to the quality of, and, and truthfully from my perspective, to have you be the Providence representative mm -hmm. is, is fantastic. I think on behalf of the city, on behalf of what the skill of what your team is doing over there and your concept it is a really, really great thing. Thank you. Menu-wise, how often does the menu change? Um. I mean, we introduce specials uh, whenever we travel away and enjoy like foods at different restaurants. We try to emulate and make it our own, okay, and just be able to provide something cool. But it's pretty unscheduled. It's unscheduled, okay. Definitely. So that's so people can come in there this week and the next week have a surprise or something they're going to see on the menu. Yeah. So you mentioned travels. Has that been a, a good influence for you? Yeah, I mean, we like me and my business partner. We basically travel a lot. Um, before we open up shop here and well, throughout our travels we just ate the best food whenever we travel we would just try to eat like eat like a local wherever we go so nice. then that way it's just 
with our knowledge repertoire, we're able to put something really cool together. Where did you and your partner, did you guys have a culinary background or what made you want to get into this? No, well, my business partner is business background. Okay. Um, me, I grew up in a restaurant, so it just worked out like that. Now, having you guys open this in Providence and in this space, so if you, it's the outside of the garages over there for mm -hmm. behind the, the Biltmore. These spaces are all small spaces, so each one of these guys that went in there took a chance to be a part of it. And the success with you has been great. So I, I can honestly say that I've had so many comments from people out there that are hoping to see you grow and hoping to see other locations and things. So I hope that's a source of encouragement for you all. Um, Event-wise, is this something you think that you guys would continue to do? I mean, the Mohegan event, the Sun Wine Fest, is going to be a, a dramatic event. It's a large crowd mm -hmm. that's there. Is What type of things will you be serving there to people in the sample? Um, we're just be, gonna be serving our takeout menu more or less, just our pork buns and our mozzie men. So that way we could really just maintain the quality of food that we're producing. And that's obviously very important. I mean, I gotta tell you, this was delicious. So we've heard that a lot today from each of the guests about the quality of type of things that are out there. So going to these events isn't easy, and for you to say that is, is important because maintaining quality is, is dramatic, especially for the teams that put together these things. So the menu changing, the success that you've had there, You'll keep us up to date on anything new that's going to happen, right? Yeah. You'll let us know. Well, All right. Know, so I'll be reaching out to Francis because now I know his number, so now I can text him and, you know, I'll get a response probably within a day, but it's okay. I'll still make sure that I get him back to him so we can know. But thank you for making the time to come in today. I know you had a hectic schedule. Congratulations to you and your team on, there, on your success. You're doing well. I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. We'll do a little bit of Facebook Live while I'm there. Yeah, sounds All right? good, man. Thank you for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Greatly appreciate, appreciate it. it. So as I get ready to close out, Kate Nagel is up with everything news and politics. She's always got fantastic guest lists coming in, but we've had a lot of great guests. We broke some really good news, talked about some fun things. Um, make sure you check out Providence Restaurant Weeks. Go to GoProvidence's website. I can't tell you enough. 90 participants, that's amazing throughout the state. And next week I will be at Sun Wine Fest and I'll do some coverage from there live. Um, and also next week on The Taste, I'm happy to say that we will be featuring Fall River. So just over the border from here in Providence, 20 minutes down the road from Providence, We'll be having some guests in from the great city of Fall River to highlight Fall River dining. So I'm Rick Simone. Thank you for joining me on The Taste today. Have a great rest of the day.